What do you get when you take the most innovative art studio in the world and combine it with some of the most classic and beautiful music? Julie Art. Just kidding. It's Fantasia, of course. There are many creative artists who worked on this film, but we decided to use this opportunity to introduce a member of Disney's nine old men who may not get as much attention as he deserves. Who? Let's find out. Before we start, don't forget to check out our Discord, our coffee page, and like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell, all the things. It really helps us out. Les Clark was born in 1907 in Utah to a Mormon family. Les Clark, I think we want more Clark. <laughs> that joke is just nice and wholesome. He was the oldest of a dozen children, and like many oldest siblings in a big family, was very mature for his age. The only reason I'm not mature for my age is because I'm the middle child. Plus, my older brother is a poo-poo head. Growing up, the family didn't have much money and especially struggled to make enough after Clark's father had an accident. This meant that Les had to take on a lot more responsibility at home. In his teens, the family moved to California, where he attended Venice High School. And before you ask, no, the school bus was not a gondola. While he was in high school, he worked at an ice cream shop. Delicious. Shout out to ice cream shops, the coolest places in town. I'm no longer allowed at Baskin Robbins. <sighs> Bunch of poo-poo heads. Clark had become fascinated with cartoons and would go to the movies to sit through several pictures to see the cartoons again, particularly ones with Felix the Cat. One day, a man walked into his store who would change his life. He would uh, letter the menu up on the mirror so people could read it, and Walt complimented him on his lettering. So when Les graduated from high school in 1928, he asked Walt if he could have a job as an artist, and Walt said, well, bring your drawings by, and Les put some drawings together and came by, and Walt said, okay, you're hired. And he graduated high school on a Thursday. He started at the Disney Studios on that following Monday. When Les started, the studio was making cartoons with Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, and among the employees were Ub Iwerks, Hugh Harmon, and Rudy Ising, or, as we call them, our besties. However, soon after, Universal stole Oswald and contracted almost all the animators except Iwerks. Since Clark was very low down the pipeline, he was never approached by Charles Mintz to come to Universal, so he remained at Disney. Well, it pays to be the new guy, I guess. By this time, he was working as an assistant to Iwerks, who was starting to animate the first cartoons with Disney's new character, some dude called Mickey Mouse. Les Clark made his debut as an animator when he animated the xylophone dance sequence in the first Silly Symphony, The Skeleton Dance. And it's been haunting us every Halloween since. Iwerks animated a vast majority of the first Silly Symphonies, but he soon left to start up his own animation studio. That's why he's called Iwerks and not WeWorks. Iwerks' departure, however, actually wasn't a roadblock to the development of the Disney studio and, unlike the previous event, didn't cause any artists to leave. With Ub gone, Clark stepped up as the main animator and specialist of Mickey Mouse at the studio. He got a young animator named Fred Moore put under his wing, who was a natural animator and would eventually become the most influential person in defining the Disney style. You might say that from this point on, the studio's animation style had a bit more Fred and a bit less Clark. Yeah, I'll take the dad joke trophy right here, please. Shorts proved to be a great showcase of Clark's ability as an animator, and he thrived in the medium. Among the best work he did at this time was the male tree giving a caterpillar ring to the girl tree and the girl tree blushing in flowers and trees, great thinking and personality scenes of conductor Mickey Mouse in the band concert, and a big chunk of Country Cousin. In the mid-30s, a huge number of artists who had gone to art school and would later become very dynamic personality animators came into the studio. For example, in 1934 alone, future superstars Ward Kimball, Milt Call, Frank Thomas, and Bill Titla came in just between April and November of that year. More besties! With a feature film called Snow White and the Seven Dwarves in the back of his mind, Walt had begun to bring in Donald Graham, the great life drawing teacher at the Schonard Institute, into the studio to give action analysis classes to the animators to improve their skills. 
Les was an avid attendee of these classes, and his skills as an animator and draftsman greatly improved keeping up with the drastic changes going on at the studio. He didn't fall behind the way many of the older animators who, like him, hadn't gone to art school. So, uh, I don't know, kids. Don't stay in school? When Snow White started, Clark was given lots of complicated scenes with the dwarfs and was a key contributor to the film. His most important scene in the picture is when the dwarfs are dancing in the silly song sequence. Les had the challenge of matching the perspective and movements of the cartoony caricature dwarfs that were conceived through imagination with the realistic Snow White, which was done with the aid of live action. Next up for Les was animating Mickey Mouse in the ambitious short The Sorcerer's Apprentice, which was done with classical music. His animation of Mickey in this sequence is some of his best work. Clark's sensitivity and warmth are effective in the light-hearted, inexperienced apprentice. We feel sympathy for the character and connect with his worry and panic as his innocent mistake begins to have a domino effect. And by that I mean, I'm eating Domino's pizza while I watch it. Just kidding. We have fun here. And are hoping for a Domino's pizza sponsorship. What I always admired about Les's work on Mickey and other characters is the way he would use clothing. When you look at his scenes from The Sorcerer's Apprentice in Fantasia, his Mickey animation, you know, Mickey's wearing this big coat, big hat, you know, big coat, loose. So the way he created these folds, it's unlike any other animator would have done. He really analyzed that. And you could do it in a really simple way, but he got really involved and wanted to show that this coat is heavy, that it's sitting on this little Mickey body, but it has the right amount of weight and that the folds are creating the right type of follow through. So his analysis of clothing is just amazing. When Les came on to Pinocchio, he helped out on many different parts of the movie, primarily in the animation of that little puppet boy himself. He animated the sequence where Pinocchio turns around when Geppetto is inspecting him before leaving for school. After Pinocchio, Clark went back on to Fantasia, because you can't stop that Fantasia-crazed Clark. And here, he animated the sugar plum fairies in the segment The Nutcracker Suite. In 1940, the animator was given the honor of having a seat on the newly formed animation board, which he would serve on for nearly 35 years. Instead of going on to the realistic low-key film Bambi, Clark was assigned to the cartoonier Dumbo, where he animated some scenes of the title character, particularly in the clown act sequence. <laughs> During the war, the Second World one that is, he stayed at the studio animating on war shorts including the Oscar-winning Der Führer's Face, where along with Milt Neal, he did many of the key personality scenes of Donald Duck showing his turmoil and anxiety of being in a Nazi camp. Les also at this time animated the Train to Bahia sequence in The Three Caballeros, which is a good example of how the animator's work retained aspects of iWorks animation. He then went on to animate first on Make Mine Music and Song of the South, where he did a decent amount of the minor characters. On Fun and Fancy Free, he was credited as a directing animator for the first time. Some of his best animation is in that film. He not only animated the warm, gentle singing harp in the Mickey and the Beanstalk segment, but also lots of Bongo and Lulu Bell in the Bongo segment. After, he again worked as a directing animator on Melody Time where he animated the bee in the Bumble Boogie segment. On Cinderella, Les Clark animated some heartwarming scenes with a leading lady, along with Eric Larson and Mark Davis, who were directing animators on the character. He also did some of the scenes where the prince and Cinderella dance. Eric did most of them when they were first dancing, but Les took over for much of the So This Is Love sequence. 
Clark also animated a lot of Alice in Alice in Wonderland, including the sequence where she's at the beach with a dodo, the bird that is. He would serve as a directing animator two more times, first on Peter Pan, primarily on Princess Tiger Lily. On Lady and the Tramp, he worked on the scenes where Lady is a puppy. After, Clark became a director on shorts and for TV, such as Donald in Math Magic Land, Donald and the Wheel, Goofy's Freeway Troubles, Lunch Money, and I No Fool with Electricity. He returned to feature animator to direct the opening sequence in Sleeping Beauty, but didn't do too much since they found he wasn't really feature material. Les briefly returned to animating when he did a little bit of Pongo and Perdita in Dalmatians, the one with 101 of them. But from that point on, only worked as a director on shorts and television. Due to the changes at the studio giving Les the impression that old guys were no longer welcome at Disney, Clark retired in September 1975. He would die of cancer four years later. Les Clark's career is one that is full of loyalty, longevity, and creativity. With a small ego, Les was able to pick up significant but smaller roles with lots of personality and charm. His status as a member of the Nine Old Men stands as a testament to his creativity and work ethic at the studio. Plus, he made us scared of brooms. Who else could do that besides a witch? Thank you to these people for supporting us on Patreon and Coffee. And if you want to make sure this channel sticks around, you can check out our Coffee link in the description. Every bit helps. Thank you for watching this episode of Dizographies. Click the thumbs up button below if you liked it. And if you want to be notified when the next episode comes out, consider subscribing and hitting the bell. Comment below with characters you would like to see us cover. Further reading and references are linked below. We hope to see you in another Dizography. Dizography.